Hello everyone, this is Madhusudan Raj. Today is 1st of September 2018. And as I said in my last video analysis, uh, there are many important things going on in the Indian economy. So here I am uh, going to discuss all of them. So I'm going to start with the condition of Indian rupees against the US dollar in the foreign exchange market. Then we'll talk about uh, the Indian stock market, which is you know right now reaching its all-time high level. And then we'll talk about some other issues and like the recent GDP number, which came out of last quarter. And then I'll talk about uh, oil prices and everything. Also, everything is connected. Remember, so uh, let us start with the analysis of. Uh, Indian rupee. We all know that the Indian rupee is uh, hitting its all-time, all-time new low level of uh, 71 rupees against one US dollar. Just you know, yesterday, day before yesterday. So this uh, low level, this depreciation, it has never seen its entire history. Uh, it went to 70. It went to 71. Now what is happening is that we have to understand that why rupee is hitting this new low level and what implication it has for all of us. Now the reason uh, that the government is uh, you know, citing obviously is uh, going to be external reasons. So they think that recently they are saying that because Turkish Lira, the, the national currency of Turkey because that was weakening. Uh, because of the sanctions that were imposed by the American government on them. It is because of that the Indian currency was weakening. Uh, Arun Jaitley said the same thing, the economic affairs secretary, he said the same thing. But how much is the truth into all these statements coming from the government? Uh, we have to understand that the rupee depreciation has actually nothing to do with the external factor. It has uh, everything to do with the internal factor. Uh, some basic theoretical concept has to be cleared out before uh, you start to understand this depreciation. So let us discuss that very quickly. We all have to understand that uh, a rupee, which is you know, let's say this is you know currency or money. It is not strictly speaking money, but just for the sake of uh, simplicity, it is being used as money today. So let us uh, say that it is money. It's also this currency, this money is just like any other commodity that is selling in the market. So just like any other commodity, it also has its price and its price is nothing but its purchasing power. So how this purchasing power of rupees determine the purchasing power of rupees determine similar as similarly to the other commodities purchasing power that is the price. It is determined by its demand and supply factor. Now, the supply of rupee is com completely in the control of the Indian Central Bank, that is the RBI. RBI has the monopoly over the issuance of uh, supply of you know, money, rupee, in India. So, RBI controls the supply, the demand is coming from the uh, Indians, and of course, and from the foreign investors. So, for example, if the foreign investors are coming and investing into the Indian stock market, then the demand for rupee goes up. And if they are pulling out their uh, investment from the Indian markets, then the demand for rupee is going to fall. So these two factors, the supply of rupee and the uh, demand for rupee, these two factors determine its purchasing power, vis-a-vis -vis the purchasing power uh, of dollar, for example. Similar is the case with dollar or pound or lira or uh, whatever currency we are talking about. So we have to see now the exchange rate against dollar is determined by on one side demand and demand for and supply of rupee and on the other side demand for and supply of the dollar. So what is happening right now is in the in US, the US Central Bank, the US Federal Reserve, they have so, uh, slowly started to increase their interest rates. Because uh, since uh, Trump government came to power, the data is improving and, and these central banks are data driven. So the data is showing that uh, the Indian economy, the American economy is on a solid footing. Uh, what the reality is, uh, we are not going to talk about that. But at least the data is saying that the economy is improving in America. 
and that is the reason why now the historic low level of interest rate can uh, go up remember the interest rates in america is it's to its low is almost zero percent since last 10 years since the beginning of the financial crisis in 2007 eight. so now the american central bank has started to raise their interest rate slowly so recently the governor of uh, u.s federal reserve the chairman he came uh, mr powell and he said that uh, because the american economy is improving they're going to continue to increase the interest rate now what is happening is at the same time so whatever investment was coming to india remember the big institutional investors like the pension fund right uh, and, and the insurance funds these people are looking for a little bit of difference in the interest rate so wherever they're going to get highest returns they're going to come and invest that money so so far they were invested heavily into the indian stock market why because the interest rate in american markets were virtually zero or even negative if you consider it a real interest rate because the inflation rate was positive but now as the u.s central bank is increasing that means what they are doing is now they are increasing the interest rate by reducing the supply of dollar in the international market so that that means the supply of dollar is going down it is tightening and that's the reason why the purchasing power the price of dollar is going up and that is one case but what is happening in india is the indian central bank rbi has created so much of rupee supply that the supply of rupee is so high in the asian market and in the international market also that compared to dollar is purchasing power is pretty low because its supply is very high and now uh, the problem is with the demand also because the dollar is strengthening so the demand for rupee is also going supply was already very high now the demand is also going down so this twin factors are resulting into you know very rapid depreciation in the purchasing power of rupee uh, that means the foreign exchange rate of rupee against the dollar so as i said it has nothing to do with the external factors so for example even if the dollar is strengthening if rbi you know had followed a very tight money policy if they had not really printed so much of rupees in Indian market, and if they have if they kept the interest rate, you know, higher, then that would have attracted a lot of saving from abroad also. That would have attracted a lot of investment in the Indian you know, market. If the Indian economy was on the you know strong footing, then these kind of withdrawal of uh, foreign currency uh, would have not taken place. But that did not happen because the RBI was following loose monetary policy for so long. Whatever, you know, this now I come to the growth number. So recently the uh, last quarterly growth number came to 8%. And in the fine print, in the news report, they are saying that this is because uh, the, the recent growth rate has been calculated by using the last year's growth rate, the last quarter's growth rate. And because that was so low after GST and demonetization, Remember, the growth rate came down to 5%. So obviously now, any little bit of rise is also going to show a big appreciation. So now, we have to see it in that context. That the base here is, base was so low, so that, you know, any increase will show up, you know, very high percentage rise in the GDP number. But in any case, whatever this GDP data is showing in, in India right now, most of the GDP numbers are driven by government spending. Private sector is still not you know recovering from the double wave of the monetization and the gst right the informal sector was already down investment is not coming in, into india and and so that's the, that is the reason that private investment is not picking up the pace so so everything is being spent by the government so government is spending all this money and remember whatever government is spending is is basically on wasteful unproductive activities so that is showing up into the GDP number and that's why and obviously the elections are also very near now so the government Modi government is desperate so that's why they have you know come out with this 8% GDP number but this GDP doesn't really mean anything on the ground because it is most mostly driven by government's higher spending and remember higher spending by the government is not good for the economy because as long as the private sector is not performing well right uh, that is not going to result into higher standard of living for the indians if government is spending money by taxing people that that is actually going to hurt the economy right uh, so that eight percent of growth rate is 
showing nothing. They're just change in spending that is, you know, showing into the figure. So high GDP number doesn't mean that our standard of living is going up. So all this thing, all that money that they printed and spent, that is resulting into this, you know, higher figure. And that is also uh, resulting into the depreciation of uh, rupee. You know, that is the reason why rupee is at 71 you know, rupees per dollar label right now. Not only that, uh, the oil price is also going up recently. The oil price is around hovering around you know, $70 per barrel in the international market. Now what is going to happen with this weak currency rupee is that it is going to result into high price of everything in India. Because remember when rupee is weakening against dollar and we are you know, completely relying on foreign imports of oil and gold and other important you know, commodities in India. Our exports are very little, so we don't have much of you know export cushioning to pay for our imports. Import bill is going to rise. We have to pay more for the oil, and because oil is the main energy source for running the industry is going. So that's why what is going to happen is the price of you know transportation is going to go up, and because as I said, oil is the basic energy source for the industries. So products, you know, every every item is going to go up in price. So it's going to become the inflation is really going to spike. And that's the reason why the Indian Central Bank RBI is also increasing the interest rate now. They are increasing it slowly, but they are increasing. So uh, all these printed currency rupees, they also entered the Indian stock market. Printed currency rupees and printed dollars by the US you know, reserve, they all entered the Indian you know, stock market and that's why the asset bubble is bulging very really big. The money, the printed money is going into the stock market. So right now the stock market is zooming at 38,000 level. So for example, I read a news you know, headline today in Reuters that Indian stock market is at its highest peak right now, although it is very costly. So now these are two, you know, kind of two things that they don't go you know, side by side. On one side, the Indian stock market is also you know very high at very high level but uh, at the same time it is also very costly so obviously uh, if the market is very costly then it is not the right time to buy because there is no value in the indian stock market right now remember you the first rule of investment is that you buy when it is cheap and you sell when it is you know costly dear you buy low and you sell high only when only then you're going to make Right now, the street, the public is entering into the stock market and the mutual fund because the prices are going up. You know, they are only attracted when the price goes up. So this is going to result into a lot of pain later on because remember, the interest rate cycle has already turned up. So RBI is raising the interest rate, American Central Bank is raising the interest rate, and once this rate will start to go up, this bubble is going to burst. And remember, the 2007 financial crisis started to go a lot of debt. And in these 10 years, the world governments and the corporates and the individuals have accumulated even more debt. So this time, the bubble is going to bust, you know, in a big way. So I, I think the 2007 crisis will look like, you know, a small, you know, kind of event uh, in comparison to what, what is coming into the future. Now, obviously, nobody can say when this bubble is going to pop, but it is going to pop because all these bubbles are inflated artificially by the cheap credit, the unbacked uh, fiduciary media. And that is the reason because the bubble is the boom is unsustainable. It is going to result in busting. So, as I said, all these events are connected. The depreciation of rupee, the stock market zooming, the higher you know, number of GDP, these are all connected event and as I said the oil price is also going up so that that will also have an impact on the Indian economy so for example you know suppose there is some kind of war in the in the Gulf right now because the American government is very aggressive against the Iranian government they have imposed all kind of sanctions on the Iranian government and the Iranian government is also very belligerent so uh, they are also not going to let down I, I'm hearing that they have uh, install the missiles in Iraq near the border of Israel now. So suppose if there is a war in between you know, Israel, Iran and America, Israel and Iran, then obviously because Iran is a member of OPEC countries, the oil cartel, the price of oil will go up, you know, like anything. So very weak rupee, high price of oil, 
this these are not good signs for the Indian economy. So what what I feel is uh, uh, very dark clouds are gathering on the horizon of the Indian economy, and we have to be really careful right now because when this bubble is going to pop, it is going to be spectacular, and obviously there will be a lot of pain in the market, like what you know we have seen in two thousand and seven. This will be similar event but much bigger than what it was in 2007 so uh, this is what i wanted to convey to you that the this this events all these things just are you know showing a direction on one side only that indian economy is you know entering a very dangerous zone right now we are getting into a lot of trouble all this uh, euphoria of very high market is not going to end you know, into uh, not going to end well because the euphoria, the mass crowd psychology tells us that these kind of euphorias, this kind of mass delusion phenomena, they always end very badly. And we don't know when the rupee is going to stabilize. If it is continue to going to go down, then we may face a similar situation like uh, what what happened in the 1990s. Uh, what triggered the economic reforms by the Narasimha Rao and Mohan Singh? No government, so we can face that kind of you know um, foreign exchange reserve issue. You know they are saying that we have a uh, comfortable foreign exchange, but if RBI is going to use dollars to just you know stabilize the currency, defend the rupee, then we will very quickly run out of that foreign exchange reserve also. And two hundred billion dollars reserve is not really much. So then, if we have that kind of problem, then we are going to revisit nineteen nineties you know at a bigger scale. So anyway, all in all, all these signs are very ominous and we have to be very careful in this time. Uh, I just wanted to discuss all these issues and kind of uh, uh, send a warning to all of you guys that you guys be very careful and protect your wealth from whatever is going to happen in future. Uh, and I think that this is it today and I will come back again in future whenever I see something important, uh, some important event taking place in the economy. So thank you for watching me and uh, goodbye.